Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about making bubbling slime bases. These bases are great for things like toxic waste, bubbling waste, stuff like that. So it's a real great fit for your Nurgle armies or maybe Skaven or something like that. Basically if you want to capture something like uh, nuclear sludge, toxic waste, anything, or, or just general grossness, vile pools of infested ickiness. Yeah. So we're going to make a base that does that. Here I've got a 32 mil, so pretty something, I wanted to pick something really small. Obviously you can expand this concept up to a, quite a large base if you want to. So what have I already done? Well, quite simple. Um, this is just some cork, obviously, that I ripped up into some pieces. I built into multi layers so you can see we you know we try to create some height variance there um, I took some chunks out of it so you can see where I've kind of hacked into pieces and parts of it took a little bit of grit and sand it doesn't quite show up because it's black on black but I put a little black rocks here around the very edge to show where the smaller rocks are breaking down into the pool uh, and then I just went ahead and laid down a layer of gloss varnish across the just right on the plastic to have that soak in and just kind of seal up the edge of the cork make sure that nothing soaks up in there because we're going to use a water effect later so we want to seal the edges that way it doesn't all flow under the cork or just soak into the cork the cork will absorb water effect so by laying down a nice layer of gloss varnish here on the bottom and then up into the edges it holds everything in place it also self levels a little bit of this like bumpy base from gw um, so we can actually have like a nice smooth surface so the first thing I want to do is actually take a little Vallejo ground texture. I hate the look of cork as cork. That's always, like, that just looks terrible. Never just leave your cork as cork. So I took chunks out of it to break it up, but now I want to break it up the other direction. So I'm going to grab one of my little punji sticks here. And all we're going to do is we're going to just take some of this Vallejo paste, and we're going to just go ahead and shove this all around the edge. We're gonna try to leave the holes uncovered um, so, so that we get a nice height variance. We'll put some big chunks on there. We can have some go down to the bottom, get in the way of some of the rocks, that's fine. We can have this extend out. The point is just we wanna make it so the top of this thing isn't just completely flat. Nothing gives away the game more with cork than when you see either the division line between layers, that is to say, when you can see where the two pieces have been glued together. That's number one. That just looks terrible. You can always, you're like, yep, cork. And number two is when the top of the cork, like the sides of cork look like rock. The top just looks like flat cork. It looks, doesn't look like rocks. It looks like nothing. And that's not what we want. So we're going to, like you can see here, we've got this, you can see here we've got this line between the corks. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some of that up there, make sure that's nice and smooth. Basically think of this paste almost like the way you'd use putty on a seam line, right? Um, we can leave things like holes there, that's fine. If we get some down on the side of the base, no big deal, you just want to wipe it off, bring it back up there. So that gives you... Now we've got some bumpiness, we've got some verticality, where exactly the model is going to sit on there. In general, you kind of want to know where your model is going to sit so you can match it up appropriately. But you can, this remains soft enough. It's like slightly flexible that you can still push a model down into it and glue it on regardless. Uh, we'll get a little more right there. There we go. Nice. Okay. So now we got that. So what I'm going to do here is our first step is just we want a nice rocky ground on the side of our sludge base. So now we'll have lots of different textures. We'll have our little rocks. We'll have this big thing. We'll have the grit of the texture. If you want, you can drop a little bit of grit on top of this so you can work a little sand into it, something like that, to even break it up further. Okay? Uh, I'm going to do just that and then let this dry. Then I'm going to go ahead and prime it and we'll come back and we'll sort of do some initial painting and I'll show you how we actually make the toxic waste. So back in just a moment. All right, we're back. Uh, you can see all the grits dry and now we've got this nice texture. I had said I was going to come back primed, but I forgot I had one more step before that. The next step is we got to add the big bubbles. So when with my toxic waste bases, I like uh, a little bit of big bubbles, a little bit of little bubbles. So the big bubble we want to lay down here first. 
Now, when you work with green stuff, it often is the case that you have a little more than you need. It just happens, right? Like, it's very hard to cut the exact amount of green stuff you need. And so, oftentimes, I'll, you'll have a little bit extra. So what I, what I do when I have extra green stuff is I roll tiny little green stuff balls like this. You just take the extra green stuff, you put it in your hand, right? And then we just roll it out until you get a nice round ball. This is obviously what this was done a long time ago. So now what we do is we take that ball and a sharp X-Acto knife and very carefully we cut through it with my knife I clearly need to change. There we go. So we get two little halves like that. You don't need to cut it right down the middle. It doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, it shouldn't be because then you get, you know, balls of varying height. Looks like different size bubbles. So then we just take a little super glue and let's put a bubble right there and a bubble right there. We'll do the big one over here on that side and we'll do the smaller one. Oops. We'll glue it to my finger like a real bright person. That's what a smart guy would do. They would glue it to their own finger. And we'll put the other one right there. So now we've got our two little bubbles down. There we go. So let that dry. Now I'm gonna go prime it, and then I'll come back and I'll show you like both how we've primed it and then how we're gonna get our paint down and apply our water effect. So back in a moment. All right, and we're back. So uh, you can see base is all primed up there. Um, <clears throat> went ahead and gave it a good zenithal. I actually have already, before I started recording, just given the rock uh, a wash with Nolm just so that was drying before I, you know, started recording and didn't have to wait for the whole drying time on camera. Um, while that's finishing up, we're going to go ahead and attend to the toxic waste pool. Uh, so we want this to be very bright and glowing, and that means we're going to get into the world of uh, some fluorescence and stuff like that. Now, there's lots of different for, different fluorescence on the market. Uh, I for this example, I'm going to use Warcolors fluor fluorescence. That's a hard word to say. Um, they make a whole range, including a pink, a green, a yellow, an orange, and so on and so forth. Um, I really like these. I think they're pretty great. They're quite transparent. Um, we're also going to use some Green Stuff World fluorescent at some point, which they have a lime and a yellow and an orange. Um, you'll see why I'm using two different ones here in a minute. Um, there's Scale 75 also recently introduced a range. There's, there's several around. Um, the key is you want something super bright. So, on my palette here, I've got some of my yellow and some of my green. And what I'm going to do, okay, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and scoot that off camera so I'm working in the center here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of our yellow. And we want to hit these bubbles. And you'll notice when I took the, what I did with the zenithal is you notice how I really turned the bubbles themselves white. And then I focused a little shot here, sorry, focused a little shot like here and here and here, like, but I left a kind of dark ring around the bubble. That was intentional. That's because in the end, I want these to stand out and to get things to stand out, you need contrast, which means we need to have a light, something darker, and then a light beside it. Light against dark creates contrast. It's the same as if you've watched my video on doing glowing eyes or OSL. It's all the same principles to make things actually pop. People think oftentimes, well, if I paint something bright, it will really stand out. No, that's not how that works. Um, imagine a white dot. Imagine that white dot sitting in the middle of a white field. Like, or, or let me put it this way. Let me, let's make this a lot simpler. Grab a sheet of white paper from your printer, throw it out in the middle of the snow. How easy is it to see, <laughs> right? It, it's bright, but it's surrounded by brightness. Now lay down a black tarp over that snow and then put the piece of white paper in the middle of that black tarp and it's gonna be pretty obvious, right? So that's the simplest way I can explain contrast. We want the yellow because we want the bubbles to be brighter, a point of interest, and look like they're, they're sort of thinner. And thinner means more light travels through, means brighter. So then we're gonna take some of this green here, and we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the, uh, of the base area with 
this green. Now the war colors fluorescence are still gel, which means that oftentimes when you put them down, you can keep working them on the surface itself. Uh, I want to do a video called painting on the miniature sometime, and war colors is really excellent for that. Um, but that's effectively what I'm doing here, right? Like I put a dollop of the paint down. I'm not really thinning this. I mean, my brush is wet, but beyond that, I'm not really thinning this, right? I'm just spreading it out on the the surface itself. Then I will actually thin a little out, get a little water in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just run that over the top of the yellow here. Just all the way around. That way we make sure we get that everywhere. Wipe that off, go back to my yellow, and reapply some yellow in the top center area. Maybe a little bit right there so we get some other visual interest. Okay, so now you can see we've got that, look at how bright that is. Oh, that is just nuclear, I love it. It looks even brighter in person. Obviously the camera cuts out some of the the brightness as it tries, as it seeks to balance out all these insane fluorescent colors. Now, the other thing we're gonna wanna do is we wanna make the rock nice and interesting. Uh, so, and we wanna darken the edge of the pool where it's up against the rock. So we're gonna take some Ethonian camo shade, which is a nice gross brown green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my base here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is take some of this camo shade and just force it down here on the edge line. Okay? To show like where this stuff has started polluting and twisting and tainting the edge of this stone. And then I'm actually gonna work a little bit of it into the pool itself around the very edge. Okay? I can actually then go back into my green, grab a little bit of that, some of my fluorescence, and I can make a nice little mixture here of grossness and the fluorescent. Okay, now we're going to let all that dry. You can see how we get this nice transition of like the, the gross, grody, muddy, icky stone and, and mud and stuff then flowing into like the toxic waste. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is we need to then, you know, just get the rock highlighted up. And so we wanna, we, we're gonna just be very quick and simple with that. Take a little pale sand, um, which I like as like a sort of good rock highlight color. Grab our dry brush. I'll wipe that down. While all the rest of that's drying, we'll give the rock a nice dry brush here, just very quickly. Make sure not to hit our, there we go. Easy peasy. Um, I'm actually gonna leave that on here. We're actually gonna leave it on the dry brush because I'm gonna swap out for my old friend the pigment palette. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some pigment and work some interesting color into this rock. So I wanna take a little bit of brown and we're gonna work some brown down here into the lower areas. We'll grab a little bit, sorry, here, I'll move all this over so you can see exactly what I'm doing and as far as the pigment I'm grabbing. So a little bit of the brown color here. We work that down into the rock in some various places. We'll grab a little bit of the, the black over here on the side. Grab a little black pigment. We'll work that down in those deep recesses down here on the side, you know, under the rock. Tell you what, let's get a little exciting. Let's grab some red, like some rusty pigment. This is in some area with some iron or something. Let's grab a little bit of that. We wanna be, we wanna be a little careful with this one because it's real strong. That red will be a nice way to pop off the, uh... there we go. So we just kind of stipple that around. Wipe our brush off here. Then what we're gonna do, oh, there we go. We're gonna take our old friend Agrax Earthshade. We want our rock to have, like it shouldn't be a clean gray rock. One of the things that drives me the most crazy when I see people paint stone is they paint it just like this flat gray. 
I challenge you to find a rock in nature that looks completely flat gray and white. It just, it doesn't exist because like nature happens. <laughs> There's mud and rain and weather and moss and algae and all this kind of stuff. So then we're just gonna take some of this and we're gonna go ahead and give this a nice wash. That'll seal all our pigment in too. Mute that pigment out at the same time. So we can just give that a nice simple wash. Now at the same time, if you want to still keep some of your, your rock looking very black, we can grab some Nuln and just mix that right in. Like we're just gonna, we're, we're gonna wet blend with washes. So we'll just take a little black and we'll put some of that down in these spaces too. Just make sure everything's nice and, nice and sealed, nice and covered. All right, so now we let all of that dry because now we've made a big mess. We've got all our fluorescent paint down here, we've got the rock itself. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna let this dry. I'll just do another quick dry brush over the edge of the rock, but fairly light. And then when I come back, we'll do the water effect. So back in just a moment. All right, we're back. So you can see everything is nice and dry. We picked out some edges on that rock. You know, we can go a little farther with some of those edges if we want. So we can get in there and, and really just make some of the, like call out some of those edges a little bit. And you know, we did a little dry brushing, but we could get in there and say like, just hit some of these edges like that. Just so we make sure there's really a lot of nice contrast around there, that kind of thing. That way we get just that nice, a nice rock effect that looks like we've got some edges really poking out there. But this isn't really a bit tutorial about painting rocks. We're here for the toxic waste. We're here for the sludge. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little yellow and a little green from our palette over here. And we wanna wipe most of it off. And then here along this edge, we're gonna just wipe some up here. Just like, almost like we're dry brushing, a little bit heavier just to get some of that reflected glow where it's gonna be up there. Not really trying to, this isn't gonna be full on OSL, but we wanna kind of sell that effect, right? And some of that would be cast up, some of it would just be like the actual liquid stuck there, whatever. So now that that's all dry and that's there, our next step is to make the actual pool and this is where the magic happens, this is the easy part. So now all we gotta do is I'm gonna use some AK Interactive Puddles. Um, this has a nice, like, slight muddy tone to it that I like. Um, just very slight. It's like a... Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> Anyways, I like this stuff, but you can use anything. You can use, like, still water or realistic water or whatever. And, of course, the as with all bottles like this, the top is not as clogged. Because why wouldn't it be? There we go. All right. Uno momento, while I unstick that, and while, while I talk while I'm doing this. Um, so the goal here is we're gonna make some fluorescent nuclear waste. Uh, there we go. Now we got a good squidgy puddle. We'll mix a little more than what we're gonna use. Like I said, you can use like realistic water from Woodland Scenics, still water, magic water, doesn't really matter. So here we got a little muddy stuff. We want a little bit of mud to this. It's gonna be, it's toxic waste, but it's still soaking up mud from beneath it, right? Then we're gonna take some of our Green Stuff World Fluorescent, which is really more of like a wash than anything else. And we're gonna put a bunch of that in there. And we're just gonna mix that up. Okay. Now, the reason we laid that color down first and didn't just do this directly over the white is because we wanted it to be brighter underneath than the actual liquid itself. That way, what you get is a layered effect. We're trying to create the illusion of volume, of depth. Having the lower layer be brighter and shine through will create that illusion. So, now we grab a little pipette or something like that. We're gonna soak up a bunch of our sludgy toxic goodness here. I'm 
I'm not like taping the edge or anything nonsense like that. You like on a base like this, you can just rely on the the normal uh, ability of liquid to like stick to itself more than it wants to do anything else. The adhesion or whatever cohesion, yeah, cohesion. Let's get rid of some bubbles. We'll drag a little bit over the top of each bubble. Even though it's not going to stay there, it's okay. Okay. Then, so now we got that laid down. Now what we want to do is, you notice we have those little bubbles that are kind of in there from when we, when we, you know, piped it out of the pipette. We want to make sure we try to pop those. So I'm just going to take a little paper clip. And we're going to pop the little ones. Just try to get those out of there so we get a nice even application of the liquid. Now if you want to go all the way, if you want to have a couple other small bubbles in here, what you can do is you can take something like this. This is a little silica packet. This came in, you know, something. I don't know where it came from. It doesn't really matter. You get them all the time in like boxes of stuff to keep things fresh. And they say like, do not eat. Who's eating silica, by the way? Why, why do they need to put that on there? Who came up with this one? All right, so uh, we take a little couple of our silica balls here. And what we're going to do is just literally drop it right there in the liquid as a little clear one. Now, it's not painted, and that's intentional. What we're trying to capture here is just a small nearly clear bubble, but what it will do, because it's clear, is it will show the color from underneath. So it will look green, even though it's actually clear. And if you want to push it down, you can just... Oops, you get in there. There you go. You can just push it right down there. So, then we let that dry. Now, it may take a couple applications of your puddles. Um, that is to say, so you know, anytime you're you're working with realistic water, shrinkage is a thing. Um, so this is going to shrink down. You have to let this dry, and then you may want to apply a second layer of it. So that's fine. I, I'll probably do that uh, off camera. But so I'm going to let this dry. This is going to take many hours um, to dry completely. So I'll let that happen. I may apply a second layer. Yes, I will cover the little clear bubbles if that happens a little bit. That's fine too and uh, then we'll come back and we'll see the effects of it. All right, we're back. You can see everything's all dry. Looking really nice. Uh, so we've got our goopy base with our little bubbles. You can see, let's get, let's get way in there. That's about as, as way in there as we're gonna get, I think. Okay. So, you can see that we're, uh, we're all dry. We have our nice goop. You can see our bubbles that we placed in there are now trapped in there. We've got our little clear ones to make, you know, sort of different looking bubbles that show like something about to pop. And when you turn it like that, see, see what a nice, how cool that looks? Cause you can like see through it. It shows to the lighter color underneath that we pre-painted, right? Like from that angle, that looks really cool. And so what I, that's what I enjoy about this, that you can move this around and get different sort of experiences with the effect. The rock looks nice. You've got good colors built in. Using like with green sludge, having a little bit of red pigment in your rock is great because then you already have some complementary colors on the base. I went ahead and black rimmed it. That makes another big difference. Um, I always say you can uh, have your bases rimmed in any color you want as long as it's black. Black is 99.9% .9 of the time the correct choice. And one of the reasons is because it does create this sort of contrast against the base. Um, if there are things you need to correct, so let's talk here at the end about correction mechanisms. Something like the Green Stuff World Fluorescent, if you're having that. By the way, if you don't have any of these fluorescent paints that I have here, um, which I would recommend getting, I think they're all good. I like the Green Stuff World Fluorescence. I like the Warcolors Fluorescence. Um, 
but something that if you don't have these, just find the brightest yellow you can and undercoat uh, a, a very nice uh, bright green. And that's gonna get you as close as you can get to this. Um, if for some reason you, let's say your bubbles don't get covered up enough or you don't like how yellow they are, like they come out pretty bright, if you didn't like that, you can always take some of the the like the wash here of your green and you can just glaze right back over that after the um, realistic water has set. Now, depending on how matte your ink or your paint or whatever is, you may dull some of the shine. If you don't want that to happen, you can just take some gloss varnish, you run a thin layer of gloss varnish right over the top and boom, it's instantly shiny again. If you have small holes that have developed in, because like in bases this small, it's kind of hard for the, the uh, water products to always easily settle. So if you have small holes that develop in your base or something like that, again, same deal. You can take some of like your wash, mix it with just a little bit of the gloss varnish to so turn it to like that green, paint over the top of it, and you'll get this super shiny green layer that just evens everything out, smooths it out. And the gloss varnish will dry a lot sooner. It's generally how you fix sort of realistic water or real water pours or still water or, you know, in this case, the AK Interactive puddles or whatever you happen to have because it will appear to be completely part of the thing underneath because it's clear and glossy. So all that's left there is just attach a mini on the top and you're good to go. Um, pretty simple process overall. I mean, I know it seems like it's crazy for me to say that when I just spent 20, 25 minutes explaining a base, but these are pretty mass producible. Um, you know, just cutting the little, little balls, making little cork rocks. Once you get into it, you can do a lot of these at once. Um, but there you go. That's your toxic waste, your bubbling ooze bases. Uh, so I certainly hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you liked it, hey, give it a like. Uh, share this. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and much appreciated. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. Uh, but as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.